Let's do this. Okay, everyone, welcome back to Sabado Sessions podcast. Uh, hiatus is over. The lads are back from Malta. And yeah, we're ready to talk about worlds and everything that's been happening in the world of power things since in this talk of the week segment. So, uh, Indy, take it away, bro. You mentioned something about you had a conversation with Matt Gary. Yeah, your mic's on mute, my guy. You need to press it twice every time, stupid thing. Um, I had a I had a good chat with uh, Matt Gary today, going off his comments on King of the List podcast. Uh, so shout out to Matt, shout out to Ryan. Um, good good listen actually. <clears throat> um, I just asked him because he he brought up the fact that you know the prime time thing, um, the whole you know this is for the viewers, how it impacts the lifters more than it helps the viewers. Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously he he said his piece, but obviously it was it was broken down over the weight classes, so he didn't have like a chunk to speak to me. Um, so I actually asked him for his opinions on it all. We had we had a good backwards and forwards, and by backwards and forwards it means we had the exact same opinion. Um, <laughs> and his opinion was sort of the IPF like cares more in in essence about the viewership than it does about what's best for the lifter sometimes. Yeah, I think, I think with that, I'm think i pretty sure the point were, must have been discussed whereby because of that, the sacrifice was the lifters, especially in the heavier weight classes, had to sacrifice kilos to cater to the eight-man flight and the turnovers. Not just the, not just the heaviest, all of them. So check this out for a madness. The longest flight, the longest flight, so a section of lifting throughout the entire competition was 25 minutes and that was the supers on the squat 25 minutes the average flight time for each like discipline essentially was 22 sub 22 minutes Mm -hmm. and like being a pretty big guy myself and having trained very very quickly myself like my training goes pretty quick that is savage because it's hot anyway um and you're you're doing a lot anyway and then the turn runs faster and we're having this conversation it's like the eight man flights seem okay but like a 10 12 man flight like sheffield and stuff like that still would be very very viable still fun to look at still enjoy like you know a spectacle but what it would do is it would give the lifters the ability to actually push because this is a world like you're meant to be putting the lifters first mm-hmm. and it's meant to be about who's the strongest, not who's the fastest, who's the fittest, like that, that sort of like detracts from everything in my opinion. And it's not even just the heavyweights, like even as a, a smaller lifter, you're still getting through things very, very quickly and it's still going to take a toll on your body. But like the Jesus, for example, um, how the hell are you meant to warm up, do all your warm up, squat 400 and X kg? A couple minutes later, 400 and X kg. A couple minutes later, 400 and X kg. Like, that's not, you know what I mean? It's not, mm-hmm. it's not viable in my opinion. Um, so as much as we love like the prime time stuff, I think as long as it's going to be like eight person prime time, super quick flight, it's going to continue to impact lifters. And I think Jason Clark, the New Zealand guy, um, he's uh, Evie's coach. Shout out to Jason, really nice guy. He he also put a load of um, information on um, after Wills about how many of the winners actually hit total PBs. And I understand, like, um, you got people like Evie, he was literally like, I'm done, I win, put that on the bar, let me shake people's hands. Like, that was a goat move, in my opinion. But even then, only two, I think, or three. The winners out of all of the weight categories actually hit a total PB. Mm-hmm. Um, and this isn't just Sheffieldisms that we spoke about. This is people not actually being able to perform to their standards because of how quick everything's moving. Yeah. Um, and and that and I think Matt's gonna try and you know put forward a motion whenever he he's able to to say, look, listen, we need to start putting the lifters' needs first and foremost yeah. because um like as a, as most viewers they're not going to care if there's two or three or four extra like in my opinion it's a more enjoyable viewing experience if people are hitting weight yeah of <laughs> like, course yeah, yeah, yeah you you want it viewer friendly you want it to be like enjoyable entertainment people failing lifts 
isn't in my opinion entertainment or people not taking lifts because they don't have the time yeah is not entertainment like for my deadlift i remember ryan on the stream was like i think you should just not do his second and come out for his third because of the pace of things and i'm like mm. that's not an enjoyable experience no, and then not, yeah. if i miss my second don't put a number in it puts stress on everyone else someone drops out like the polish guy in the 120s flight yeah. didn't put his second and third deadlifts in put stress on people if someone bombs out um and and doesn't continue the competition like Panna did at Euros. Imagine mm-hmm. if that was an eight man flight. That's putting so much stress on the competition. Yeah, of course, um, yeah. So that 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 was a conversation and like a very important takeaway we had from from Worlds anyway. Yeah. Uh, before I, I, I <laughs> before I sort of pan it to the other fellas, uh, I know there's going to be people out there commenting, going, "Oh, you know, you all, you guys all knew it was going to be an eight man flight, so therefore training should have responded to said." um i don't know uh, conditions but man like being there and actually witnessing it all firsthand that cannot always be the case man because there were so many other factors that came into play it, it, like people prep as good as you can for an eight-man flight but mm. come, come into the real deal and put all the practices into practicality it's like, a people, whole different thing is like <laughs> another point was the toilets were eight quite a bit away right so I'm, I'm speaking to people in the back. There were people that like, I really need to go to the toilet. I don't have time. I'm just gonna sit here. Like, do you know what I mean? Like yeah. little things like that. It's just, it's like, it's, it's maybe it's just a comfort thing. And like for people who say like, oh, you should be ready for this. I'm ninety nine point nine percent sure those people have never competed at an international meet, let alone an eight man flight. Um, or you know what I mean? Because logic dictates. You know, you don't want things moving that quickly, mm-hmm. um, but it is what it is. Yeah, Jurance, you were going to say something. Yeah, I, I think. I mean, again, if I say something here, people will be saying is an excuse I'm throwing due to my performance, but it's not just that. It's just about the eight men flies. When people think about, oh yeah, but you're gonna have eight minutes. It's not actually eight minutes. Especially when you step on that platform, you hit your lift for, for 10 seconds. So that means your 50 seconds gone back to the jury. So the next person have to come in, they don't have that minute. So almost like the eight minutes didn't turn out to be sometimes four minutes, sometimes mm. five minutes, or depending on how long people are taking on the platform. Yeah, because I noticed people... that too. Like some people were hitting similar numbers. So they didn't, the loaders didn't need the extra time to, <clears> you know, load a different that, weight onto the bar that that's the quickness about, um, about it and um, I mean again what Indy said there is about um, things like it was, the place was hot as fuck right and I mean the wet, the climate did not work toward the lifters benefit and again what well, the environment was just different and then for you guys to put a man flight just because of the viewership to me again um, similar what Indy said there they're almost taking away that showman that we are showmen. We're here to show our strength, but mm-hmm. we can't do that because we're not giving, given the time and the platform to do that. Again, that shows about how many people just hit PBs. Not many people hit PBs. Mm-hmm. So, so the IPF have to put almost like go back and review and see. And I mean, no jokes aside, right? When Anna was talking about before what was talking about, I'm going to be on a B flight. I was taking the piss out of him and all of that. But after we named Malta, Believe me, I'd rather be in the B flight because there were 13 men on the B flight in the morning. Mm-hmm. 13 men. So I got pretty much a 10 minutes way in before my next attempt. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So to me, that's something they have to consider because again, you have got these lifters, the 83 in my way, class, there were 34 lifters. So for you to get uh, a B flight for what, 20, is it like what, 34, like 26 lifters in the morning, and only eight in the afternoon, it doesn't make sense to me. Mm-hmm. At do you all. know what you guys should do you know? moving forward? Just do a quick regional, do your openers, <laughs> and then input those numbers in your next qualifying. <laughs> <laughs> that's a sick yeah. loophole. If that's the you, know, you know, another like problem, like we'll cover this quickly. I think Mo wants to say something as well before we move on. Is if, for example, you, you miss a lift or something happens or you're not out in time, anything, and you have to take it again, you're potentially going from last as an opener to third, second yeah. on your second. Because so you don't even jumps have are. Yeah, or if someone's making bigger jumps. Um, and that 
can have like a big, big impact on you as well. And I know people, there's going to be people out there that are going to be like, oh, it's your fault, but like your jumps are your jumps. Um, when they're in that situation, they won't be saying it's your fault. They'll be saying the exact same stuff that we're saying here. Um, so before people start like jumping on the hype, think about it logically, use your brain. Like it's difficult. And we're not saying or using any of these as excuses. Um, and Durin's pointed that out as well, but this is a thing. Like, if yeah, it's a viable the, reason. It's a viable reason. And there's people like Matt who have been in this sport longer than most people have been alive, right? And then, like, people like Ryan who are on the commentary and Joe. And all I heard in the one trainees 105 was the pace, the pace, the fucking pace. What is this pace? Again and again and again. There's a, a reason for that because it was fucking quick yeah i mean well, to, to be fair oh, yeah, me sorry, sorry, sorry. before more goes right when i fell my second squat i went to the back i wanted to go and take the pit take a piss i thought like, let me go and piss by the time i want to walk to the to the to the toilet i'll be almost thinking about my lift what the fuck did i do on that platform so when i come back i will hit it right but literally i said to paul like i need to take a piss it to go and take a piss and to paul was like you ain't got no time so i had to sit there Literally, less than three minutes later or four minutes, I look on the in, in the monitor. I was next. I was like, "Me, that was not even like thirty seconds, but it's not like it was three minutes, mate. Go next." So it's just to say, like, it's not an excuse of me failing my squat or not hitting depth, but is again to say the time is taking for these flights to run so quickly is not helping us, and plus, it's not even healthy for our, us as lifters. Do you know what I mean? It's, they're putting our health into danger in terms of like the amount of way we, we're squatting or doing on that platform without the time of recovery mm-hmm. is ridiculous and again joe what you mentioned that people were going to say to us saying oh yeah you guys should have known this i wish these people can be on that platform for eight eight men per hour flat i really anyone that will say this please please get yourself uh, fucking uh, strong uh, and get at the there. speed at the speed that those international spotters and loaders were doing it as well like not like it's a ridiculous. regional where you might have an eight man flight but it takes like 15 minutes to put plates on this <laughs> was different they, these guys were like they were faster than the formula 1 crew bro <laughs> like, I swear but anyway I was in the back yeah. and all I'm hearing is I was like what's going on <laughs> <laughs> yeah go on Mo chime in but now nah, um, everyone said everything man that that meet was crazy quick like for me because uh, i remember it was what we started warming up around 7 p.m indy that's when the 105s would have started warming up around 7 p.m ish and like as soon as we started warming up bro every single time i was just like this on the chair like fuck every single warm-up was like you need to go now I was like fuck you need to go for your first attempt fuck. it was like i was just tired bro. <laughs> bro i went i think i went i went on my deadlift and my squat we don't talk about bench uh, I, I literally <laughs> I literally went play 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 oh and now I can chill for half a second play 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 do you know what I mean like it was it was like trying to get it done in a fashion so that I'm having as much rest as I can before my yeah. opener but like all that doesn't matter when your opener to your second is four minutes <laughs> do you know what I mean you're just, uh, you're just sat there shaking like both zero BCAAs in the system <laughs> <laughs> But like, okay, it was yeah. it was a peak one, but I think it was a, we we do have to recognize the fact that some people did execute on the, that, and I mm. think one of the biggest one of the biggest accomplishment will be um, Anatoly, my weight class. Um, yeah. He didn't seem faced by it. He seemed like he was prepared. He seemed like he executed perfectly. Bro, this um, guy trains in the middle of war. Like, what's what's this bit of pressure <laughs> going to affect him? Yeah. It's but true, uh, I, I I think it's also worth noting that it was like if you had the opportunity to, I think because it was so late in the night, and then mm. if you were cutting on top of that or restricting your food intake or water intake to any capacity, compared to somebody who had the chance to mm. eat and be comfortable all throughout the day to evening time, it was because of the conditions you were in. Mm-hmm. Anything that would be a disadvantage was heightened to the max. Yeah. You know? So if you're cutting a lot of weight, most likely you feel very gassed out, and it was it was basically a dogfight. That that's what the meat was going to be was, for anyone. It was late in general, like I was falling asleep, yeah. bro. I was like, shall I have a nap? Shall I not have a nap? What time shall I get up? Like, um, I know there's people out there that lift late, but like if I'm taking a pre-workout scoop at nine p.m., 
I Something's gone wrong, yo. <laughs> I didn't sleep. I did not. Because, I I, because of how late I took pre-workout, I, I didn't sleep until... I slept at like 5.30 until... a.m. <laughs> I think I slept sun- Saturday night was the last, the next time I slept. Because I completed Bruh. Saturday. I completed Saturday. So Sunday night, I went to the bank where I hadn't slept. Like, Bruh, I didn't you, slept. You were still wired, yeah. Yeah, I was still wired, yeah. yeah, bro. I slept. I completed on Thursday. I slept Friday. Not even Friday. No, yeah, if it was Friday around what 11 p.m., that's when yeah. I slept. I could not, yeah, sleep bro. I was, I was telling these guys, you messaged me at three you know? in the morning that Friday, I know, and you were like, Yeah, I'm, I'm ready for the next block, send it. I was like, I, yeah, bro, I, I just <laughs> emailed, I am, um, I called room service up, I was like, Yo, I need some warm milk, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> some cookies. Right, right now. I need some warm milk, yeah. they bought some warm milk up, and I, I think I had a half a bar of the chocolate that Evie gave me and I was like yo this is nearly done I need to put <laughs> I locked it in the safe <laughs> I, like, I need to oh not touch goodness. this but uh, I, I yeah think, uh, go on. yeah go on, go on, no, go on Jules. I think again um, I, I, I think I'll go back to what um, Mo just said there is the conditioning that was around that day and that late waiting as well, it was it did not help some of us again no excuse by these factual things that yes, some of us should have considered a few things around why, uh, what should I do next and all of that stuff. But again, I think the IPF going forward, mm. they should probably start thinking about these timing because yeah. these timings are not helping anybody. Well, I'm not just talking about <clears throat> the eight men flights. I'm just talking about even the timing of the lifting. Me as an international, as a professional uh, powerlifter is, when I wake up in the morning, I know I'm competing my energy is already up, mm, right? Yeah. Around 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock, I'm starting to sleep, bro. Do you know what I'm thinking? Like, my body starts shutting down. Just imagine you being in that bed, in that hotel room, or in a bed sitting like that, watching TV for fucking 10 hours. <laughs> and the next thing you're like, oh, Jurens, where are you? Where in? I was like, oh, shit. I've been laying here for 10 hours. You know, yeah, you know I, mean? I did not move nothing for 10 hours. True, you, you're scared to go even for a walk. You're thinking, oh, I might pull a muscle. So they only yeah. do it. <laughs> I, went, hey, I went for I went a walk for in the morning, bro. bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. Oh, I yeah. went for I a walk think... in the morning. My glutes started oh. acting up. I said, shit, Dur- let me just go back. Jurors are scared. Bro. He's gonna be walking down the road. <laughs> he's gonna have someone with a slingshot throwing Tren at him. <laughs> 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 because the thing is that, because Sophie's mom, my, my, my missus, she, she's always said to me, mortar, the flooring when you're walking around because it's a stony island, the stone that really slippery. But when mm-hmm. I woke up that morning, I was like, I ain't going for a walk, mate. I might sleep somewhere, but that's it. <laughs> you know? So I lay there for 10 hours. And the next thing they told me, okay, weigh in. I just was like, oh, for fuck's sake. I need to go for a weigh in. So, do you know what I mean? Your body already shut down. And then you're weighing in at, well, a five and you're lifting at, at seven. It's ridiculous. But IPF need to think about these kind of things. Because look at Sheffield. You know? Sheffield yeah. people, you guys are more at Sheffield. You did not lift at 7 p.m. Did you? No, no, we started lifting around four. You know? Yeah. I think but, they should just should care to these things. Yeah, but very more athlete focused. But I, I was gonna move the, the topic now to like shit that we noticed that was happening this world that was much more prevalent. Like I think I I don't know if it was Indy or Mo. No, no, I think it was Espin that was saying how like Yo, if, how, when you... how are you gonna compare me Mo to Espin? <laughs> but I, the, you know, I just, I just, I just, I just remember you, man, were on the screen, yeah. Like when we were saying how if, if you, even if you get like one, I'm white trying to lift. Or I'm one just red. not gaining any access. That's the difference. <laughs> yeah, what happened? Know. What happened to British? Oh yeah, sorry, holiday, holiday. I was, <laughs> I was getting the tan. Yeah. Jeez, yeah. Yeah, go uh, on. I was, yeah, about the whole like if you get one, one white or one red, the jury's on it, and you can't even yeah. be. Yeah, excited for your lift. So look, so basically, right, obviously you guys were there, so it was different. But just watching it on the stream, right, it just got to a point where you just couldn't enjoy it, honestly. Like, after after a lift, you couldn't even celebrate it. Like, yes, fuck it, they got the lift. It was almost like, even if you got two whites, you're still there waiting. Like, you can't even celebrate. Because mm. mm. for a, a quick second, you think, right, it's just going to get overturned, like every other fucking lift. It just turned out like watching football as in the VAR. It, that's literally what it's like or what it was like. So well, it was even, you know, it's probably just, even worse. I had, a, I had a video. I had a video of like after every lift, Gaston just walks past the front going, 
<laughs> literally, oh, that's no. how it felt. It was to me. I feel, I feel this championship. I know um, people have their opinion. The Europeans we did last year, I'm always going to bring the Europeans. I'm sorry, guys, anyone who is listening, I'm always going to bring the Europeans. Because to me, I believe that European we did last year is the toughest judging and refereeing I've ever seen in Palestine in my life. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And we saw how many people bombed out and how many injuries because of the way the judges won. So in this championship now, I think the Immortal, the consistency was not there. They were so inconsistent. It was mm-hmm. unbelievable. It started from the lighter weight class, even to the heavier weight class. You see some of the lift, right? you know. Oh, it was consistently the... inconsistent. Yeah. yeah. You, you see that on the audience, we'll be like, ah, oh, this is not going to pass. Yeah, because this is worse than the other ones uh, um, that went last yesterday. And you see that one will be overturned, pass. I'll be like, what the fuck is happening here? So the inconsistency <laughs> was, it was ridiculous. You know, I don't know whether they were doing it for TV audience. And at one point, I'm sorry to say this, but I want I was there present. This is not a story someone told me, or it's not someone that showed me. At one point, there was a jury member. There were three jury members sitting there judging a lift. Gaston was not in the jury, but Gaston stood up where he was. He came to the jury to give his opinion on that on that lift. Are you allowed to do that? You're not allowed question. to do that. No. Yes. Once, once, the, once the jury's been announced, the jury is that that's the jury set for mm. that yeah. uh, for that flight. <laughs> To me, I sat there, I'm thinking, I felt like saying, what the fuck are you doing? But I didn't want it to get banned, but because I didn't listen yet. <laughs> but I was like literally about to say, what the fuck are you doing? You're not even part of the jury. Why are you having a say? Mm. Because so, I don't care whether you're a, you're a president, you're a CEO, or you're, you, even you're Jesus, bro. Come on. So I think it was in the, um, the Two White Slack podcast as well. They also mentioned that apparently the, the recap that, um, the jury could see is what we could see as well on the mm-hmm. replay. Yeah, so it was just the one yeah, yeah. angle. Like, it was how, just one angle that they get. Like, yeah, it doesn't make sense. And and on no, top of that as well, it's like yeah. it was so inconsistently done. Because I don't know if you guys sort of knew this, because obviously you guys were there, but we didn't even know that Delaney's first squat got overturned until fucking bench. We yeah. it was so I, messy. In my That's head, I thought problem. shit, he's so ahead now. Yeah. But then. All we saw is his his um second spot, and then we was like, "What the fuck's going on?" It was just so badly done. It was really ridiculous. And I want the other the other bit as well that that made everybody laugh. At one point, the jury was was discussing about a lift, and they turned around to look at the monitor for the replay. The replay was gone, and then they were like, (laughs) "They literally were like, it's gone." (laughs) <laughs> so I'm saying like, so you tell me, what's the be- is it the benefit of the lift there or the benefit of the viewers or the jury? So p- p- you need to make a decision, but they can't make a decision because they don't have a replay. <laughs> but like, so, some of the stuff I was just, I was like, because I, I always say you shouldn't like bash the refs, you shouldn't bash the refs. Like it is what it is. Um, you, you, like the front refs like can only see that one immediate thing. They don't have like a replay. But like some of the lifts that the jury were saying no to or like turning people away, I was sat there and I was just thinking to myself, are they seeing like a different different thing to me? Like Joy's deadlift. And and as much as people like to talk shit, some of Taylor's lifts, I was just like, hey, what are they how, what have they seen? How would squat? How would squat, bro? How the hell did that squat go? I, I don't get it. I don't I don't quite understand some of some of the calls that were made and, and, and stuff like that. And it actually became a running meme where people were posting like real record recap stuff like that. And people were commenting on it like, oh, I'm surprised the jury didn't have something to say about this. <laughs> you know, on all of them, like it becomes a running meme. And the problem is like people pick up on stuff like this with social media and stuff like that now where it's very easy to like see things like everything's available you can go onto the olympic channel and look look through all the the videos and stuff and some of the stuff that was happening and some of the decisions that were being changed are quite confusing as a lifter because like in my head i squat and bench and dead to a standard in terms of like i I for me it's either in or it's not. And we had this conversation previously. Mm-hmm. But even me having locked out my deadlift or having done my squat and no none hit depth, I'm still like, oh please, please be three whites. Like mm-hmm. I'm literally like, please fucking yeah, three cause whites. Because no, if there's no, one leave no red, room for doubt, yeah. 
one red, I know that they'd be like, oh, what 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 can we find here? Like, what's mm. going on here? But like, it just, it's meant to be a benefit of the doubt to the lifter, and that's been forgotten. Yeah, I want to I want to bring up something because uh, you mentioned about the joy thing, right? Her, her deadlift, and it was uh, two reds to one 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 white. Like, like usually, yeah, you know, jury will be overlooking it. But one thing that I did notice, and it kind of made me feel a bit sick, was that there were coaches from other nations that she was like very much up against, and they were tr- like yelling at things at the jury, trying to like I guess influence the jury, and I thought that was pretty sick, man. Like, he just, I remember him just yelling, like, oh, look, it was obviously not a good lift. It was two reds. It was two reds. I'm like, bro, let the let the jury do their job. They're already trying to look at one screen before it goes away already. Like, why trying to, like, influence them? I thought that was pretty, but, like... Bob, that know. was happening pretty much the whole week, week, uh, week, because even Tim deadlifts, when he pulled it, they passed it, and the jury was reviewing the lift. And the coaches from other, not even the coaches, president you know, CEO and board members from other federations, I know them, they were screaming at the referee, at the jury saying, that was no lift, that was no lift, that was, I was just sitting there, I'm thinking, mate, you guys are meant to be some of the most responsible people on the planet in these sports. Can't you just shut your mouth? Yeah. <laughs> you know, literally, which was very sad, but it is what it is. And I, as Indy said, we just have, as lifters, we just probably have to keep our lift to the standard, not give them a reason to look into it yeah that's yeah, what yeah. We probably we could be doing that that's that's all we can do there's nothing else we can do about it or the refereeing or the juries or whatever you just have to go there go um go you get your depth squat make sure your el- your elbows are locked on your bench and all of that crap we just have to do the right thing that's it no it gives them a reason to be honest the thing is though what confused me like before we before we went out for for worlds and stuff there was that whole uh you know, we're going to be looking out for X, Y, and Z. We're going to be looking out for soft knees and things like that. And I'm not being funny, but the amount of people that I saw wearing, like, knee sleeves on on sumo or, like, had soft knees and were, like... It, it seemed like there was a vendetta against not certain lifters, but certain practices. I, I don't know. It, mm. it, was really, it was really odd. It was really confusing to me because, like, I was seeing some of the lifts and I was like, oh, yeah, oh, it's unlucky. It's not locked out. And then they're like everything's fine and i was just like uh because like like you like you alluded to like a euros was very very strict but it was uniformly strict in my mm-hmm. opinion mm-hmm. Uh, whereas mm-hmm. this sort of like peaked and troughed a little bit but like you said all we can do as lifters is try to remove the doubt like our aim should always be for three white lights they can't overturn three white lights yeah, that's exactly. all we can do <laughs> Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, for me, I'm either getting three white lights or I'm getting three red lights. I don't really yeah, want anything real. in between. Yeah, Without true. kind of judging, yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah. Yeah, go on, Espen. So obviously we said that this episode wasn't going to be like a, you know, a recap on all classes and stuff like that. But I think we should just cover a couple of things that we have been getting questions on. One of the main things that we just need to talk about now, because I've been getting a lot of questions, I'm pretty sure all of you, especially you, Jurens, is fucking getting questions every single day. What happened is mainly the first question that everyone wants to ask you, Jurens. So what we'll do that. is we're going to pretty much start just from the beginning, man. Like in terms of you arriving at Malta, obviously training was going fucking great. <clears throat> All of us here in the group chat, I mean, we saw the videos that a lot of people didn't even see themselves. Your squats were looking ridiculous. I saw you, that shit live. You, you, were, you were benching your PB for fucking singles, like free sets or whatever it was. Your deadlifting think- was going great. What happened? Right? I, th- like... I think the answer to that is, I don't know. I know people will say to me, you are an experienced lifter. You should know what went wrong. Because the reason I'm saying I don't know is, I didn't have to cut big weight. Right? All these massive PB were done. I was 84.5, under 85. Right? Yeah. So I, I did literally, going to Malta, I flew to Malta, I was like 84.7 or 6. So, and then I flew to Malta very early. I went to Malta on Sunday. So it means I had a good five days ahead of me. So again, the nutrition went well. The water loading went well. Even on the day of the, of the comp itself is I did my normal routine as I normally do. You know, finished the weigh in. Kedrick was there, helped me to fuel up. I did that, prepped myself. 
and I think one of the things I just noticed was that had never happened to me before was as soon as I drank my first few bit of um, refueling and all of that, <clears throat> I start sweating. When I'm in sweating, not a joke. You know the type of sweat where they they lock you in a room or in a container or something and they freed you up at the 30 minute. I was sweating to the point where my GB top was drenched. And I was like, mate, I feel like I got fever or something. What's going on? Is this nerves or not? And I start, I'm thinking like, I've never felt, felt like that. So I took a walk for a little bit around mm -hmm. the, the, um, the, the, the arena and all of that, the, the venue, and then came back, settled down a little bit, got changed. I started to warm up. Everything was perfect. I mean, Cole was handling me with uh, Jake. There was nothing we saw or myself sort of thinking, oh, something wrong will happen. My last warm up was 270. And that 270 just flew like always. Right. And even we looked at ourselves, Paul looked at me and was like, I think we're ready. Do you know what I mean? Because that's how I felt. I felt ready. So, walked to the, <laughs> this is where things start going wrong. Walked to the way, I sat there and I'm thinking, why am I feeling so hot? You know, when you, you feel so hot, you feel so thirsty, and then the, your energy just drop. Mm. And I'm thinking, why does my energy just drop? You know, yeah, yeah, again, I took my pre-workout, all of that, I did that. And I'm thinking, what's going on here? And I started literally getting heat wave, proper hot. Came out for the 290. As soon as I ran that weight, I felt the weight did not feel like a 290. This is the weight, for anyone who's listening, 290 kilo is a weight I can hit for four on a good day. Right? And it's never felt as that heavy before. To me, when I rock 290 kilo, <clears throat> it feels like a 255, 240 on the midday. But when I rock this one, this time, it felt like a 300 plus kilos. And I was like, oh my God, this is heavy. Right? That's when things went wrong, straight. Mm -hmm. And when I went, oh my God, this is heavy, almost like, as a professional, I shouldn't do that. But in my mindset, I already go defeated thinking, this is going to hurt. Ooh, do you know what I mean? But before you carry on, Jerrins, before you carry on, what is it that you said to the spotter, by the way? Because you said something oh. to the spotter when you came out. Okay, okay. Because during the comp, when I was wearing the comp, <laughs> the same spotter was so close to people. Right? It was really, really close to me. You tell him to follow. Oh. <laughs> he goes, I think, I goes, he said, he said, yo, please don't jab me with anything, please. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, all, I said, all I said to myself, I said to myself, look, this is an opener. I will be fine. I don't need you to be too close to me. So I'll be all right with this one. The second and the third one, mm -hmm. that's what you can do your job. On the first one, just let me, let me get that confidence. I need that confidence on the first one. That's what I said to him. Okay, so okay. I unracked it. It felt heavy as fuck. I, hit it. I, got, I think I go two to one. And then posted me like, what's going on? I was like, bro, my energy just been cut in half. I don't know what the fuck is going on. Right? But I said to him, to be, to be fair to him, I said to myself, you know what, fucking load it. If I'm going to die with it, so be it. At least I die on the world, on the world, platform, world stage. I don't give a fuck. So, yeah, that's where things went wrong. Came out of it for the second 305 is my belt. I, I went one hole in, so I made my belt tighter. Mm. So when I hit, if anyone could see the way I squatted it, when I went, I hit the uh, deck, my belt pinched my, my left side. Why did you tighten so, it? So the thing is, that I, the reason I the reason I tied my belt because I'm on a, my two ninety, I felt like my dead belt was loose. Again, I think all these come to the um, things about the nerves of already. I was feeling that tired, and the mm. day was not already fucked for me. And I feel like, what can I do to save this? You know, it's something I should have done on the day. To be honest, it's something probably as a professional, as someone who's been doing this for a very long time, I should have just trusted myself. At that yeah. point, almost I lost trust in my ability, you know, my ability to squat, my ability to perform, I already lost that trust when I, 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 I racked it at 290. That fucked me up straight away. Mm -hmm. In my so, opinion, yeah. like a slightly looser for me is always better than slightly tighter um, or like a little bit too tight. Just just for me anyway, I don't know if anyone else mm -hmm. feels the same way. Awesome. Simply yeah. because if 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 the, the belt is bracing for you, you can't really brace against it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's what fucked me up that three or uh, second three or five because it's not it's not about the weight that was heavy. That's what I felt the second attempt. It's because as soon as I hit down, I was trying to come back up. When that, that, that left side pinched, 
I was like, oh, fuck, that hurt. So, mm. you know, when you go like, oh, you lose tension straight. And there's no way I can fight on it. So when I came on the third, literally on the country, I was like, oh, fuck, see, I've done this before. Why can't I do this? What the fuck is going on? So again, that's, that's that self-confidence again on that, um, that third one. So I thought I had enough in it in terms of depth, but I was not enough. But, you know, that's something I could um, fix myself. Bench, perfect. I got my, I hit my open, I hit my second. Even Paul said to me, oh, welcome, Durant. You just woke up. What's going on? You know, you just come back. I was like, yes, I just came back, but it's, it's fucking too late. Even when I loaded, when you loaded the 180, to me, again, what you guys saying, Delaney failing his second squat, I didn't know that. I knew, I knew Delaney, um, Anna, everybody ahead of me, they had, they went three or three on the squat. Mm. You know, and then literally that's where I went like, I'm a squatter. If I come out of this with one squat, it's pretty much over for me. Because mm-hmm. my second and the third is 20 kilos, 30 kilos, right? So in my head, I was thinking, literally, the 790 at total, in my head, I was already thinking, as soon as I came out at 290, I was like, today, I'll be lucky if I go home with uh, 780. Because I was mm-hmm. thinking, that's 30 kilos gone already in my squat. So that means, that 820 I had in the British mind, 30, that's 790. And if bench and deadlift goes worse, I'll be lucky to go home with 770. But one thing I knew to myself, I said, look, I'm a lifter. I came here to lift, right? And I need to finish the day. No matter what happened, I have to finish this day. I'm not going to go out, you know? And then literally, as soon as the squad finished, I said, look, to myself, look, um, my bench has been strong. My deadlift has been strong. I will list to get three bench and three deadlift. But unfortunately, I got two of each. But yes. That's that's what happened, really. The reality is, I don't know what happened. I don't know why I felt like that. So these are the conversations. I've had a, a bit of conversation with Joey, and I've been having conversation with uh, Kendrick, the nutritionist. So we three of us are putting our mind together, f- trying to figure out what happened on the day so we can do better in the future. Because the British, we were brilliant at the British. Mm-hmm. The British was excellent. The Euros, even the Euros, I went eight for nine. It was excellent. I felt amazingly well. So it's almost like, for this, it literally hit me hard on that day. I know people thinking like, oh yeah, you know, you should have performed, you've not performed. And some people have been telling me, oh, were you injured? Or you know what I mean? I'm gonna be doing my recap. Do, that, do I tell people that you were injured? No, I was not injured. I was not injured. You know, if then a straight answer I can give everybody, I could probably say I was not strong enough on, that, on the day, right? And I still believe I was the strongest 83 on the platform on that day. But I was not a better powerlifter. The mm. guys that placed ahead of me were better powerlifters. I can't say Delaney, uh, um, Anna and the rest were stronger than me. I don't think so. I don't think they were stronger than me. It's just that day I did not execute. And these men executed in the way they were. Because bear in mind is I went five for nine. I told the what I told. If any of these men went five for nine, they wouldn't be where I am. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So that's, yeah, to the question has been, I don't know what happened, mate. I just maybe, <laughs> I can say I just fucked up. That's it. So another question. I'm going to come back to you, Jones, yeah? Joey. But then again, then again, then again, the question could go back to like Mo, Indy and Joey. These yeah. The guys that were watching. Do you know what I mean? No, they no, were mm-hmm. seeing things. You know, what are the opinions? Do you know what I mean? What did I was, they think I was, I was just going to say, because I'm literally just going over your footage. So I was watching mm-hmm. your score attempt. And like you can see on the opener, you were you were okay. It didn't look hard, but when you came out for the second attempt, you can visibly you can visibly see that your belt is a lot tighter, <laughs> and it's almost like it changes the way you squat almost because you, you, you almost became a little bit more rounded over, mm. especially when going into the hole. So I think just that combination of the belt being a lot tighter, not feeling comfortable, just messed up mm. with your head a little bit too much. And then to fail a second attempt the way you feel the second attempt and then to come and crush you on your third attempt, it just means it was just technicalities. And it was just like, I think if you had maybe stayed consistent with what you were doing and maybe felt a little bit more confident in your, in yourself, you might have not had any issues on the day, but it is one of those ones, man. It's like, you can't be a king every single day. You know, some it's a sport. Mm -hmm. Some days, some days are for you. Some days are not for you. Some days you got to be queen. You're not injured. (laughs) You're not injured. You're not anything. (laughs) means that you know you can you can get back running at 100 percent and then just keep firing on but also your 180 bench bro what the fuck happened man? that 175 moved so easy can i can i jump on that before you answer because i want i want to touch on that consistency thing with mo 
right? And I'll be honest, right? Because I'm unapologetically fucking like I say what's on my mind. I fucking hate Delaney's dancing. I hate it. I hate it with a pa- <laughs> <laughs> I see it and I just want to fucking launch myself off the fucking viewing stand into a fucking pile of knives. That's how I feel when I see it. However, the man is fucking consistent with his approach to the bar. Okay. Mm. <laughs> That's what matters. Like, if I was him doing the dancing, I also wouldn't give a fuck. Some brown bearded dude in the fucking UK said he doesn't like my dancing because at the end of the day, what he's doing is he's removing any differences, any like any oddities, any variations from his approach to the bar. And that's what really, really fucking works for him. Now, mm-hmm. one thing I noticed during, I don't know, fuck how I'll go you here. You, whenever you squat, you do the same thing. You approach the bar in a particular way. You hold on to it. You go back, head down. You focus for a second. You go into it. You did not do that on your second. Have a look back. You went to the bar. You didn't do the thing. You looked at the bar. You approached it like I would approach the bar. You were still looking at the bar. And then you went under the bar. And then you went to lift. And I actually turned around. I sat next to Kara. So I was like, He's done what he's done some he's approached that bar differently. Mm-hmm. And she was like, What do you mean? Because I noticed little things like that. Because I've having trained with you, having seen all your lifting. Jason Clark noticed it too, actually. I was like, he's done something different. He's approached the bar different. Like, and then you let go of the bar. And I know you've never ever done that before either. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Jorans need to reset. He just needs to reset his brain. He's got this. It's easy way for him. I've seen him hit this a fucking gym shark, throwing it around like a toy. I was like, he's got this. Just, it's difficult though in that position. I, I having missed openers and seconds myself. You sit at the back and you're just like, what the fuck? Like, do you know what I mean? Sometimes it's not even a case of like what went wrong. Sometimes you just sat there and you're just thinking, what the fuck? Like that. That was the only thing. Uh, I just sometimes it happens. Yeah. Uh, I just want to make a comment a little bit about the, the whole Delaney thing and how it keeps, keep, keeps it consistent. Uh, he, he spoke to me actually about the whole, he got, he actually got, I don't know if it was from Flex himself or someone else that passed on the message to him, but they were, he got told to tone it down because um, they had like sort of some reason to believe that the reason why his, <laughs> like I think his third squat got overturned was because I don't know, like referees and juries weren't digging his whole dance routine and whatever before and whatnot. So I, I don't know if that was just like sheer speculation from their end, but like, yeah, so just, just a little insight there, like of what was actually going on. It, they, they it has it to down. be speculation, man. I think I think because <clears throat> people could say the same thing for um, Gavin Aid in celebration after his third squat or the Chinese Taipei guy or even, you know, it's like... I. I'll be it'll be very sad to see if the jury's overturning lifts because mm. of lifter celebrating because we're not playing chess we're not playing uh flipping come here and smile and go up the stage what gets people excited what makes Sheffield so <laughs> exciting was the lifter celebrating after lifts the raw I just emotions, think the jury yeah. the jury for some reason were just incompetent that's the honest truth and sometimes it just clashed with lifter celebrating at the same time there's no other way to say it like we were basically watching one sport they were watching another like they might as well just go and read of the referees and just have the jury only competition or had the referee only competition both of them were fighting each other the whole time mm. i think don't have this mentality of oh, i'll be calm unless you're gonna cram like myself then reserve <laughs> yourself you know don't swing your arms and be super excited but I think what makes this sport special and what actually gets people to watch, like you're a sports Olympic, no one's going to watch, man. If everyone's coming there, being all stoic and stuff and walking on the platform, people want to see the excitement. People mm. want to see the celebrations after. Um, mm. So I, I don't I don't like that narrative passing around that the, the jury was over 10 and left because of lifters celebrating. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, go on, Espen. You had other questions you, you're saying. How, how cool would it be if he was to invite the jury onto the podcast to fucking get their opinion as to what's happened and get them to talk about why they fucking did what they did? That would be hilarious. Could you imagine? I think that would be so oh, sick. Don't, don't worry, it will happen. Come on. Yeah. Mo, Mo has to be there too because but, I wanted to say what he said with his chest. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, with, the, with, with the hashtag incompetent, like, just... <laughs> But Joey, oh, so everything that was happening to Jurens, right? So after his first squat and everything, was you aware of everything that was going on? Like that 290 felt heavy or could you already tell? 
Or uh, was there any communication mm. between you and Paul or anything like that? No, I did no. Uh, so how it worked was um, I it's tried no reception to... in that place anyway. Yeah, oh, is it... <laughs> that and I, I was told to limit my uh, sort of input influence. Yeah, yeah, because obviously yeah. they had a job to do. I didn't want them to be like like disturbed from the fact that they needed to do that. But uh, in terms of knowing Durance and like what he's capable of, the the oddities that came off that that came about with Scott, I knew what the the how the playing field was going to be. There were people there telling me like, "Oh, look, it's not over yet. It's not over yet." But obviously, Durance is a squatter, right? And after squats happened, I knew that the playing field was not how we planned it to be from then on. Mm. Like mm-hmm. it would be like it's a miracle would have been would have happened to, for him to even get to like top three. Um, from then on because that was a lot of kilos lost a lot of kilos lost um, but yeah so in terms of like how aware I was it's just from watching him I you know I just tried to be as I could as if I was like an audience that's like heavily invested in insurance I don't I didn't actually even know if he heard anything that I said but I, I just did what I could uh, um, as, a, as an audience member and without saying anything on the podcast I mean you don't have to but are you already aware of anything that you can tweak or anything that went wrong that you could be like right it could be because of this that you're going to change moving forward. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, in terms of divulging what it is, um, uh, for I mean, I won't I won't go into a great detail, but a good portion of um coaches are like we've discussed it, especially with Kedrick. Um, so moving forward, that there's you know implement t- changes that needs to be implemented as and when will be uh, done. So. And last but not least, before you move on to the other boys, I know there's news that you guys want to drop. So what's next for Durance and what's next for yourself? Uh yeah, Durant. So your next comp is in. Oh, I'm just <laughs> going to learn it five days next week. Five I'm days, going, yeah. I'm I'm going to Paris on Saturday just to to fucking blow it all out because oh, at the no. moment. But what comp is this? Silent it's... worker, the the Pana one in silent worker in Paris. So uh-huh. I feel I feel like you know when you had a day like I had in Malta, right? I know a lot of people tell me that. <laughs> oh, why are you competing five days after? People don't realize in Malta to me, I only did like what. Five lifts. Heavy head, you know, five lifts of heavy SPD. It was not me giving it all up. Do you know what I mean? So there's something left in me that I think I need to just release before I take a break, you know, and prep again for the next big one. Yeah, release, you know. But yeah. I have to, mate. <laughs> Why are you licking your lips, Joey? <laughs> Who's that? Why are you always looking at my lips, bro? That's a bit sus. That's That's like release. Release. You're lucky you're not checking his DMs for fucking messages from juniors. <laughs> uh, joke, joke, joke. Uh, oh <laughs> and we're banned. Uh, um, yeah, so, so, so next so, comp yeah. in five days, during Say no more. Yes. Yeah. Is there going to yeah. be a stream on that then? Is that all going to be streaming? There will, oh, there should there, be. It definitely stream, but I don't expect people to watch it because. No, What's gonna happen there is gonna be mad. No, everyone's gonna, gonna be, be watching mad. that. I'm gonna be watching yeah. it. There's a few people I know that are competing there. So, yeah. I mean, right, Lapidat's commentating again, so you, you don't have to worry about the too much uh, parlay français happening. Are you gonna be there handling Durin's joy or what's the plan? I'm competing, isn't it? Bro, yeah, I'm competing. <laughs> You're competing as well, yeah? Yeah, bro. <laughs> last last minute invite took it on like a couple weeks' notice, like sort of like. I mean, my coach wasn't particularly happy with it, but hey ho. Um, is that is is the thing you competing as well, uh, Espin? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, he's getting oh, rejected shock. everywhere, so uh, no shock. one wants oh. me anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Espin, you're not doing the Manchester event. No, man, I'm still on that visa waiting list. Oh, so <laughs> visa waiting list. <laughs> visa waiting list. I, I didn't know that. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. Uh, you know what? Uh, this could actually be the ending now of the whole 600 fucking meme for Joey. This is Yo, your chance, I'll Joey. be honest. Joey, if yo, right, right here, we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Is it add you mad pressure? You do not hit if you do not hit 600 in July. One in the silent meter, silent worker meet. You have um, to Joey, man. It's if you don't, up. yeah. Full week of memes just on you. If you don't, if you don't, you will have like four weeks of summer at the top of the week to come in topless, bro. Yeah. Topless? Hey, no, <laughs> nah, no, this, one wants what? What no one wants to see No one wants to see that. Joey, all you need, you need a 210 squat, which is what you hit in, in Malta, right? I swear that was 210. That was 205. 205. I need 205, 150, 245. That's fucking easy, Joey. You've done that in training. <laughs> 
It's if all you about, don't do that, I mean, like, what, 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 what do you mean, bro? Like, nah, Jurassic has done way do more in training, and look what happens. Like, uh, come, like, no, man's always... not throwing you under the bus. Wow. Trust me, how you going to try your own pride under the bus to, to, as an excuse for yourself? We're all in this together, bro. <laughs> Uh, so, hey, Mo, you're next, so I don't ball. know, man. Yeah, all I know, okay. Joey. <laughs> Joey, all I know is Carlene is gonna total more than you. Oh, <laughs> shit! Oh, okay, man. Shit. oh, man. Oh, cool. Um, what's the next? The next, I'm pretty. I'm thinking we're gonna be talking about Mo, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Let me we're just talk about Mo. Like, I, I me, don't know. I don't just... know if if it's sunk all in, but um, yeah, we'll we'll, so, we'll leave Delis last. So Mo finished with an eight eighty total, right? Yeah. How do you how feel? Do, how do you feel about how that? How did the day go, man? About the eight eighty total. Mm. Yeah. It's a weird one, isn't it? I think for me as of Coco, now, basically Coco, Coco finishing ahead of you. How do you feel about that? That's not even my. That's not my business, bro. It's it, that was uh that was a lot lower than the training total I hit. You know, so there's a there's a lot to unpack and process there. Um, I'm still processing mm. it. I'll be honest with you. Um, it is, it was, it was a weird feeling, but I think it was, it was, a, it was a vital lesson. Uh, it was a very, very vital lesson to learn from, because I think this was the first me where I just like, I pushed all the chips forward for myself, you know? And like, I tried to like play conservative and like, kind of just put the work in and see what happens on the day. And unfortunately my body just let me down on the day. So it is what it is. Bad things happen. Frustration is part of the process. We learn, we move, but we're still processing it, man. I went to the gym on Saturday, and yes, as soon as I stepped in, I was even a bit pissed off <laughs> when people were trying to talk to me. Well, I, I came in, I, I, yeah. Sat, wait, are you on? No, you weren't even in the gym on Saturday. Do you remember Malta? Me and Ben. Oh no, I went to the gym. Just, yeah, because I had, I couldn't sleep. Like I couldn't sleep. I didn't the day sleep after he competed, night. he was yeah, he was so, upstairs. And he's like, he's wearing full singlet. And we're like, what are you doing, Mo? He's like, I'm just stretching. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> he's got his, he's got stretching his, in the singlet. Stretching oh, in his singlet. He's got his, uh, he's got his knee <laughs> sleeves around his like ankles. I was like, Mo, what are you doing? He's like, it's just stretching. I look at Ben, Ben looks at Keris. Keris looks at me and we're like, are you sure? He's like, yeah, yeah, stretching. I'm like, bro, you, you got everything ready to go? I was like, I'm going to stay here and make sure you don't fucking lift. And he was just <laughs> like, he was like, this is his face. He went, okay. <laughs> you should have stayed to help him stretch. Oh wait, day. <laughs> Just, I don't know what kind of coaching you provide, but I don't do this. <laughs> I, I train on Saturday, two days after I lift. But anyway, yeah. good normal. But no, no, no. It was chill, man. It was all part of the process. Uh, we've we've learned from it, and we're just gonna try and come come in better next time onto the next competition. Yeah. So a lot of people, so obviously we already know more, but a lot of people are asking what happened during deadlifts because obviously you missed your opener. So yeah, like, what was so, it? Like what happened there? It was just cramping, man. I think um, I think it was, um, <laughs> so after my second, was it after my first, my second bench, I think. After my second bench, you see on the stream where I celebrate and I squeeze my hands. I've got a picture from um, White Light Media or so. Mm. They've got the exact picture of me celebrating. Um, but after that celebration, my thumb is just stuck like this. Wait, you celebrate? You celebrate like this, bro? Not like that. I said so. I was like doing that. I was doing that. Your like thumbs in your fingers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, I'll never be scared but to be punched by you. I was just celebrating. <laughs> I was ready to fight that jury after during this battle, fam. I was, I was just burning my my feet. After that, I was gonna box them. Um, but no, not like that, bro. Like you that. can't be boxing man like this, bro. With the thumb in your. <laughs> Hiya. <laughs> but yeah, um, my thumb was stuck like this, like after oh, my second no. bench, and like uh... Ben and Sam, it was two people to open it, and then uh... as soon as they let go, boom, it just went straight back. Right. But they managed to stretch it out. My forearm just locked in; the whole finger was locked in. I had like five minutes to open it up. Went for my third bench. I did a celebration like this, right? My hands were stretched out. This finger was stuck like that. <laughs> Bro, so, I thought you were just doing this, bro, at the gym. Nah, the, the, like, yeah, good was... job for once, bro. Great cool, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think, and more, I think what you're saying there, Kedrick yeah. has got a lot of work to do, me and you, because my last deadlift. Yeah. Did you guys see my last deadlift? Yeah, I was there. I set up, I crumped. <laughs> my glute crumped. I was like, fuck, I'm fucked. I couldn't move no more. That's how I was like, 
let me just put my head down and my knees down. <laughs> oh, so he got man. a lot of work to do there. But go on, yeah. mate. But no, it was just, just cramp city, man. It was like, I was just cramping aggressively. Unfortunately, I tried my best to like stay conservative for opener, but I was a bit too conservative and missed the opener. Came back, hit the 340. But it was just too risky on the day with all the cramping and everything to try and actually yeah. load a decent did deadlift. So we just, did you we just settled for what was there. Did you have a big cut? Uh, I caught... I caught so I've done I've done a cut from 109, which I did for Euros last year. But I think it's just the water loading aspect that's just not not going well for my body as of now. It's, it's just the need timing to as well, bro. Around. Like so yeah. what time did you start lifting in Poland? Uh Poland, we started around 4 p.m. 4 yeah. p.m. So you're what yeah. fucking lift literally lifting four or five hours after that. That's a long time for your body to yeah. have no water as well. No like water, no food, more. anything. So it was, and it was it's just, hotter. It was, yeah, it's more yeah, humid. It's like, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. You, honestly, I'm gonna I'm gonna say something, right, Mo? Be honest, right? Do you think your journey there could have played a part as well? Because you're <laughs> honestly, <laughs> it could have, Mo. Mo, because Mo, no, honest, honest to God, bro. Yo, don't make me do it. I'm gonna tell everyone why he took that flight. I don't know what. Well, the, it's not about whether you you know the actual reason why I took that flight because I told you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but Indy, I told you the reason why I had to take that flight. I know you why stayed... you took the flight, but I'm telling you that flight that wasn't necessary. It, it didn't matter whether or not it was necessary. I could only fly after Wednesday. How long is it from way. London to Malta normally? It's free. Is it three hours? Three hours. It's three minutes. hours. Yeah. yeah. Mo, I got how back long did from it take Malta you? to London in two hours forty on on my final flight. So it's it's three <laughs> hours max. Mo took three days. <laughs> three blood Mo, Mo started. Mo left for Malta after Europeans in Poland. <laughs> <laughs> it got there just in time. Oh, All that saw oh, in his Instagram hey. story was. Was it step <clears throat> step one or was it? <laughs> it was like I like multiple parts in it. it yeah, part like one. Jokes. It, it yeah, got part to part one. four. I was like, <laughs> "Fucking, how many parts is there?" But yeah. well, honestly, do you reckon that played a little part though? Like in terms of, I think it it did because I was also carrying like 40, 50 kilos throughout London on the ground, so it probably did not help dragging all my boxes and everything around either. Boxes? Well, we. Suitcases, suitcases. Oh, right, suitcases. Right, yeah. Yeah. I think moving forward, yeah. man, just find an easier approach, bro. Like, yeah, I know you're trying to find them two pound fifty buses to save, <laughs> save money. <in> that, <laughs> just, just, please, for the love of God, Mo, just, just get there in one day, man, or oh, two hours. <laughs> no worries. Okay. Can we can we move on to the, some really good? No, news but now, like, bro? wait, wait. So what's next now, Mo? Oh yeah, what's next, bro? Uh, good question, man. I don't know. Just chill, honestly. Um, I'm thinking of maybe doing like a local comp here in the UK at some point. But... You don't want to do that local comp in Paris? In two, bro, I tried, I wanted to do it, but I scored 170 and like my body was like, hell nah. Like if you, uh, if you, you score you, anything more than 170, you will be in the hospital. So Bruh, I just what's have, going I on just have you, to bro? Bro, I'm, <laughs> I'm in survival mode, bro. <laughs> but um. <laughs> But now nah, I'm chilling. Like I'm, I'm just gonna take time, heal up, give my body a long rest. I'm still training though. Bench is really good. Deadlift is really good. It was like a little shit on the day, mm-hmm. um, and I'll just get squat back to where it needs to be, and then hopefully when we step on the platform, it'll be a better, more compact package. Yeah. Well, you know us, bro. You know, I always want the best for you. So hopefully you can. Yeah. But, but yeah, because I want the best for you. For Europeans, you're going to be transferring me X amount of money, and I'm booking your flights. <laughs> I'm, gonna, gonna, like... I'm gonna get you to Estonia in less than four days. <laughs> <laughs> That's not very hard though, bro. What the oh I'm on a riverboat. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I and... thought we get some good news. Uh so Indy, your performance, bro. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, world record deadlift, bronze medal overall, bro, like. Like, I don't know about you lot, but these other guys that were watching you, but I was like in happy tears just mm-hmm. for you, man. Because I, I was just like, yes, we fucking need this win, bro. Like, fuck. <laughs> to be fair, uh, <laughs> before we went out, me and Tony like looked at each other. I think it's, I think it was on the deadlift. Um, he's like, he's like, is your back hurting? I was like, oh, yeah, my back's hurting. So like, why is your back hurting? He's like, I'm carrying the team. <laughs> 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 I 
I don't even know if he'll remember saying this, but he said it right. <laughs> I just, I just, I fucking, I had like fucking energy drink all down my front, like pissing myself laughing. <laughs> nah, you know, it was a, it was a, it was a good comp, man. Um, I, it was, di- it was up and down, difficult as well. It was a difficult comp because of the pace. It was a difficult comp because I fucking couldn't take my inhaler. And this isn't an excuse. Like, the, even if I didn't have that breathing problem, um, I think I probably wouldn't have hit the third squat anyway with how fast things moved mm. because I I was second to last on my first, second to last on my second, and then, like, fourth to last or third to last on my third. Um, so, you, you like, two, three minutes off what is already a fast turnaround can just mm. absolutely savage you. And I know, I know for a fact I was in training prepped for like three, five, five, three, five, two. Um, and I know I was capable of that. Uh, but like, you got to take things as they go. Do you know what I mean? As you, as you're competing, things happen, things change. You've just got to adapt. <laughs> I think going forward, it might've been a better idea. Looking back, it would have been a better idea to open at like 317 goal, you know, the three three seven and then might have had the three forty five. You don't know, you just gotta play it on the day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dan handled me really well. The numbers he put in was really well as well. Um but I just I feel it's weird, right? After this comp, I feel prepped already. Like I feel like I'd com- I genuinely feel like I could compete this coming week. Bro, Usually you might as well body... take someone's place at Silent Worker, bro. Nah, nah, nah. I'm not going to because I need this time to just chill, uh, recomp. I'm going away with work for like a couple of weeks as well, where the training's going to be like up and down and things like that. So it's a good time to have like some time off. Generally speaking, I'm really happy with the performance. Uh, but being a powerlifter, I'm also unhappy with the performance because you always want better, More, don't you? Like, yeah. Unless you hit a nine for night, like. A, British, when I walked away from British, I was like 200% happiness. Do you know what I mean? Mm Because I went nine for nine. I did everything that I needed to. I executed really well. And I I don't think I left many cages on the platform. Whereas this time, I felt like I left quite a lot of cages. Even though I failed two lifts, it felt like I left a lot of cages on the platform. It sounds like a bit of a a bit of a contradiction. contradiction. But it's it's Mm. not because I know what I wanted to hit and I know what I would have been capable of. Um, Yeah. So it's just a matter of trying to adjust for that that fast pace. Um, yo, I tell you what though, I tell you what pissed me off. You know, you know these these blue inhalers. Yeah, I found this out right. <laughs> you probably know this as well, Espin. You know, you can only take six puffs, right? If you take any more than six puffs, apparently according to UCAT, um, you can fail yeah. a drug test. Yeah, I thought, yeah. I thought it was two. No, it's six puffs over eight six hours mid- or six yeah, over 10 hours, mid-day. whatever it is. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah, so you can take... So what they say is they take two puffs and then take two puffs and then take two puffs. Or if you're having a really, really bad time, take six puffs, but then you can't take it for the rest of the day. So I woke up in the morning and I was like, yo, I can't breathe. I took six puffs. I was like, yeah, I can breathe. And I was like, oh, shit. I can't <laughs> take it for the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, the toilet was miles away. I did my squat. I was like... Right, I got two choices now. Shit myself or run to the toilet and not be able to breathe on the way back. But I don't know how some of these super heavies did it. I was like having flashbacks. I was like, can you imagine if Jesus needs a shit after his squat? You're going to have to literally <laughs> sit the man down in a wheelchair, like fling him all the way to the toilet, throw him off, let him do his thing and take him back. Because it was it was a bit of a mission with how fast things are moving. But I'm well, I'm bro. happy. Like I only needed 377, I think, for the final pull. But I was like, I can't. I physically couldn't, because I I remember me and uh, me and Dan were stood there and and Owen, yeah, uh, and they're like, you need three seven seven. I was like three eight six. He's like, you got three eight six. I was like, yeah, I've, I've I think I've got three eight six. Because I say it like that, because I'm like, you like I don't want to like mess you around. He's like, right, we're doing three seven seven. I was like, wait, things ain't going the way. No, mm. you fucking don't. We're going three eight six. I was like, I only said that. Like so that you can be like like everything's fine and stuff like that. I don't want to be like a an arrogant prick. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But as soon as he said it, I was like, nah, we we have three eight six. And to be honest, it's weird, right? I was speaking to Keris afterwards. I was like, I was a bit pissed off that someone didn't have a higher total, made me lift more. Do you know what I mean? Because like as a as a deadlifter, I'm only gonna lift what I need on the third. Mm-hmm. So I don't really know where I'm at. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because I. 
I only need 377, but 386 is the world record. So I'm going to load that and, and lift that. But like, I don't know what my top end is. I hit 386 in training beforehand as well. I know the lads have seen it, but it wasn't posted online. Mm-hmm. But that was super, super quick as well. And like hitting a big second always means my third is a little bit slower, but it also means I don't miss out as much on the total if I miss the third. Did you get what I mean? Yeah, of course, but yeah. I'm I'm prepped for two really, really big pulls. Like the second pull could be whatever and it would still move like that. So I was like, I'm really happy I got this, but I'm really sad someone didn't hit a yeah. heavier total to make me pull a little bit more. I think, you know it's, I I think it's, um, it's the Algerian that had only one pull, isn't it? If he had his second, he <laughs> would have pushed you in the, yeah. to mm. push to that big pull because he missed his second and missed his third. No, nah, no, nah, he, he was ahead anyway. So I, I wouldn't, like, it would have been if Victor Vazquez hit his third, it oh, yeah. Yeah. But even yeah. then, even if he hit his third, what I hit for my third would have pulled me ahead of him anyway. So like my third would have been fine regardless. It would have been, he would have needed to pull like 355, 360 to make me go like 390, 391, which would have been interesting. Mm-hmm. And I would have enjoyed it, you know, because I I like I used to hate that final deadlift pressure, but I really fucking enjoy it now. Like I love needing that third pull, as weird as it. But we've sounds. seen, it, yeah. But we've seen it. We've seen it at the British. We've seen it at the Euros last year, and now we've seen it at World. You that final pull. That's I like you, the you, final therefore. pull. I like the stress of as weird. I like the stress of the final pull. I like needing the fucking final pull. I like doing a third fucking pull. That's heavy. Like it's what I train for. Like my back offs are usually like really, really, really fucking heavy anyway, and I'm hitting mm-hmm. them for sets. So, like, I think it might be a day that I, I've missed the final pull, but like Emil said, yo, you got to start relying. You got to start relying on your best asset. Do you know what I mean? Um, like, Enna, I wanted Enna to hit that third deadlift. Yeah. I, wanted, I just wanted to throw something at him when he, when, <laughs> when, he, when he let it go. But I was like, nah, I can't do that. I'll probably get banned. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Get blocked, <laughs> yeah, for real, get, bro. Get blocked from real life Gaston but... as well as Instagram Gaston. <laughs> hey, you know what, though? You know what? I, you know uh, I've seen it now in, a, in the lo- in your last two comps where you put four hundred point five as like the placeholder for your last dead. I cannot wait for the day when you put it up as your last like attempt, and it doesn't change, bro. I would go crazy. So here you 400.5, go. Four hundred point five. That's fucking crazy. Bro. Euros at, at, at Euros. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. I know people are gonna find. I know you're gonna clip this and fucking make it clickbaity as well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, gonna, yes, I'm gonna clarify yes. this straight away. At Euros, regardless of who's there, if I am clean and clear on my second pull, <clears throat> I'll put 400 on my third. But you have to lift it, like, or attempt to do it. Yeah, just... yeah, 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 oh, okay. yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay. Obviously, what are you done? I'm saying, <laughs> I, don't know. I, I thought you do what everyone else did and you go and shake everyone's hands and shit. I might do, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like the thing is, like I don't. It's 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 like um, it's a deterrent. Like for me, really, really, the third pull is like a bit of a deterrent in that I'm only going to use it when I need to use it. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. if I don't need to pull 400, it makes no sense to pull 400 to push that deadlift record to X amount because then next year at Worlds or any other international competition that I may be at, if I need to chip it, why am I going to make it difficult for me to chip that later? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't like, it doesn't, doesn't make, make sense, sense yeah. in my head. So, um, um, in, in the, I have a question. I think I said this to Keris um, at the banquet or even on the uh, messages. How do you feel to think you came out more as the biggest puller, not just at a world record in the 120, but the biggest deadlift in that <laughs> competition was yours? Yo, it's wild to think about it. Because I didn't, I was watching the 120 pluses um, and I was sat there and I was just, I don't know who I was um, sat next to. Uh, it was Coco, actually. <laughs> and then I went after Tony. Uh, and we were just sat there. And, and then I think Kank missed two. And then Jesus missed his third. And I was like, I was like clapping. I was like, yeah, obviously Jesus is going to win. And then in something in my head went, yo, bro, you got the heaviest pull. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> I got the heaviest pull. Like, what's going on? But like, for me, it's... The speed of the competitions, touch wood, anyway. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, Generally speaking, they'll affect my bench and my squat. But for my deadlift, I think because I reserve a little bit of hype, Mm -hmm. um, my deadlifts, I'm able to like kick up the gear a little bit and put my foot down. Like I only really, really start to get hyped up with my second and third deadlift. Mm -hmm. Uh, Before that, I refuse to do it because like I've always seen it that people like just that a little bit of hype too soon. It's just, especially on a comp that that's late. Yeah, it burns it's gonna, them out it's, it's fast. Gonna, mm. It's going to burn you out, man. And to be honest, I'm honoured to have the heaviest deadlift. But I, it also would have been really, really fun to see Jesus pull something big as well. So mm-hmm. I just, yeah. it, it is, it made me laugh. I think it was two two white lights, I think, on their preview. They were like, um, oh, one or five had the biggest deadlift. Um, and then it goes quiet. And I was just sat there. I was like, Hey, Seuss is the only person to ever pull more than 400. Like, you've just completely ignored him. And, like, the 120s also have some um, good pullers as well. Like, there was multiple people with, like, 363, 368 nominated. It's just mm-hmm. the speed of the competition killed him, I think. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, I guess this is what... Uh, last question for everyone here that went to Malta. I guess I will ask Espin too in terms of what he saw, but... What is the highlight for you uh, that happened there that has nothing to do with your lifting, but from others that you saw, like lifting wise? Yeah, lifting wise. Yeah. Can I go first? Yeah, go on, Indy. Right. Because I've, I've said this before. Um, I got three. I was having this conversation. I got three, and they're in no particular order. <laughs> and this is going to sound really weird, but a highlight for me, because I always knew who's going to win anyway. But like seeing Tony win his mm-hmm. second title was like genuinely a highlight for me. Because A, he's a really nice guy. B, he's consistent. C, he never really like openly like does the nonsense stuff. He lives in his garage. He's a family man. And he just like plods along, wins equipped, wins British, wins well. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. just, mm. it's nice to see that consistency can continue even like that later on. Mm-hmm. Um, as in like 39, he's nearly a master's and he can still be winning world championships. Uh, number two for me honestly it just fucking made me laugh and i was literally laughing my head off is evie coming out for her third right i don't even need my third deadlift load that let me shake everyone's hands thank you because a few people copied her after that as well i've never seen that happen before and it's just that's such a goat move Mm -hmm. like just you know i mean it's not even disrespectful it's not i know what she's like so it's not like a thing She's taking the piss out of the other lifters. She's just like, I didn't get to say thank you to everyone. So let me say thank you to everyone. She said thank you to the spotters and ran away. What a move. Um, and the third one for me, I genuinely, I think it was Carlina winning world, top, world title um, because oh, yeah, it nice. silenced quite a lot of questions. You mm. know, because I, I was, I don't know if she's bored of it, but I'll tell you, be honest, I'm fucking bored of people saying, oh, but international travel, oh, but international comps, oh, but this. And she was just like, Boom, 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 boom. Done. Thank you very much. I'm going to Sicily to eat some cannoli. I'm like, yeah, boy. Yeah. That's what well, you know, I, I back it, you know, because I was I was with her two days before her comp. Like, we, she was super chill, bro. It looks like she had She's no so worries. She's so humble as well. Yeah, no worries in the world. She was, you know, she she did, she did. All she of the does. Kiwis are. Yeah, she does, she does her shit. Like, you know, she spent time with her loved ones, her family. I was, like, fortunate, fortunate enough to be there as well, like. Super chill, man. Like, I, like she's honestly through and through one of the best people in powerlifting, if if, if not the best, uh, in terms of like you know just how she is like as a person and as personality wise and everything else, man. Super kind. She she is what you see and what you get um, from socials and everything else. So mm. man, like she's amazing. And bro, she was having a full on barbecue two days before come. I couldn't think of any other lifter that was doing that. Um, leading up to fucking competition, bro. That was wavy to me. Uh, but uh, yeah. Before I say my highlight, I just want Mo and then endurance to go before I do. Yeah. Uh, I think my highlight. I'll just give three. I think the the eighty four the eighty four plus battle was insane to watch. Um, mm. that was very very impressive. I I really enjoyed watching that battle unfold. Unfortunately for Bonita, but I mean. Bloody hell. I don't even think Bonita would have touched those ladies, even if she had gone on a deadlift, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Um, because Brittany and Sonita were just amazing. Um, the next up, I think, was Keiko's performance in the 93s. I'll be honest with you, that man is Mr. Consistent. Like, if if there was someone who could, like, do a nine for nine meet on a burning ship, 
Keiko is the person you want. Like yeah. that man is not shaken at all. Um, that was ridiculously impressive. And then finally, I think Joy. You know, honestly, I think we we haven't touched her performance, but the fact that she moved up to sixty three, and all, she was unfortunate with the jury because she missed on her third score and her third deadlift. But that total would have been it's mad. just it's it it honestly like I think just her performance, her consistency over the years. Her, the, her mentality towards lifting you know like she's not acting like she's god's given gift she's just there to have fun watch other people lift when she has time <laughs> um so i think joy's performance in the six threes was, was amazing to see um on the gb side also yeah you said three things you mentioned two bro that was three no, i said that yeah, 84 that losses k and... oh sorry yeah my bad my bad, my bad. put your people the... to shame me replace mats, the host oh, yeah. replace the host yeah, bro, so, yeah, yeah. I think... my bad I, I, I just think, get, yeah, go on, Jordan. You, you, it's you now. With me, if I can give my three, is my number one is Joy 240 deadlift. 240.5, wow. bro. 240.5 deadlift. Yeah, don't and, disrespect the point five, you get me? Yeah, and um, trust <laughs> me, I know about point four five. Um, <laughs> when that 240 got turned over by the juries, they said it was not a lift. I stood up. This is when this is the place where I could probably get banned, but luckily I didn't. And I looked saying? the gas, I looked the gas in the in the eyes. I said, "Where the fuck on earth would you ever see that again happening on the sixty-three kilogram uh, body weight? You've taken that away from us and the viewers. You should be ashamed of yourself." <laughs> Literally, that's what I said. Because these are the type of things that like, you never ever gonna see anywhere. It's mm-hmm. a sixty-three kilo lifter, a woman, a female, pulling two hundred and forty point five kilos. Mate, I don't know, mate. Uh, yeah, to me, that's just yeah, that's just got more go go level. That's me. That one was a highlight for me. And the other highlight for me was the eighty-three guys in the Chinese Taipei attempting three hundred and two. 0.5 kilo squat out of nowhere. Well, I knew the biggest squat in the 83s in IPF in that class was me, Edo, and Delaney. When I saw 302 from a Chinese Taipei guy, I was like, what the fuck? Where is this man? I, I, I have a caveat you know for mean? that, though. Um, he's been popped um, before in, in, in the IWF. Yeah, but that's, yeah. that was... Yeah, but that's why that's what I said. That was my highlights, isn't it? Someone's been popped there, but he's is in the IPF. So that's the highlight. Well, man, he's jacked though. Have you seen his pictures? Like his Instagram is <laughs> mad. No, he's young. He's got, he's he's got young blocked well. abs. Like <laughs> yeah. those abs so, are abs themselves. It's yeah. his, enti- his, his entire performance was a highlight. I know um that's my second and my third. I think this is what Indy touched on is Tony winning the world title. Right. And to me, because I knew, uh, uh, jokes aside, jokes aside, going to the World Championship, we knew if things go to plan, there will be two World Champion Britain, and I will mm-hmm. be one of them. Mm-hmm. In terms of the way things pan out, and because I already had a horrible day, seeing Tony winning a World Championship, it literally, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it almost lifted that weight off my shoulders. I swear. I sat there literally because it went straight to him, man, carrying everyone else. <laughs> because l- literally, I sat there. I'm thinking, we need a world champion in this championship because we took the best, the strongest British team to world. Mm. You know, I know more myself, and the day was not really going our way, but we still took the best we had in the country. Mm-hmm. So I literally said to myself, please, if Indy can't do it, Tony has to do it. And that weight class, that Saturday um, session, literally, is the, the entire team relied on that Saturday session. Because mm-hmm. we had two 105, two um, 120, and we had 84s, the girls. Mm-hmm. You know, And we literally rely on them and say, look, you guys want to save our entire championship. And mm-hmm. to be honest, boy, everybody that did that session on Saturday, they delivered. Yeah. You know? And looking at Tony winning that world championship, it literally... Mm-hmm. Made me, it made me literally like I wanna lift again for Britain. But after Thursday, I was thinking, look, I might just give someone else a chance, <laughs> literally. Yeah. But yeah, that was a highlight for me, literally. Like again, what Indy said, every year you watch Tony Cliff, the way he does it, you know, and he's not the type of guys. It's not a poster boy. 
Tony has never been a poster boy. He's not a showman like more that did the third bench and celebrating thinking that he won. No. Tony is that daddy. I, call, I always call him a daddy of British violence thing. He comes in and does the job. Even though after the banquet, I had to leave early because Tony, I felt like I was literally being uh, the guys. I'm not, I want to talk about it in the next day. Next time, <laughs> let's just leave yeah, it. When, when, Tony, when so, Tony comes on, when Tony comes yeah, on, yeah, when we'll Tony comes up. on, I will talk yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, so, yeah um, that's mine. So yeah, it was a great. Uh, top three for me that hasn't been actually been mentioned already is uh, no, it just it, whatever it is, your top three is your top three. It doesn't have to be one that no one's mentioned. <laughs> okay, well, I, I just wanted to highlight uh, as Yana um, getting that third place because wow, mm-hmm. man, like. Like we like like Durant said, like we fucking like we're like you know we we came Team GB came in super fucking strong, stronger than ever, and the medals needed to show, and she came she got up and did that. Um, obviously not to <clears throat> not to throw any shade of Temi because she did fucking sick as well, and I reckon she's got more in her from what I saw anyway. Um, yeah, that was it was five fifty seven point five and five fifty five. Man, they both killed it honestly. Yeah, bro, mm, like, like both of them killed crazy. it so much. And Ziana deadlift. Fuck me, she had a lot left. Anyway, yeah. Filthy, bro. Filthy. Uh, second for me was uh, the Britain, Brittany Schlitter win. Uh, because uh, a little backstory, actually. She did, I actually did her last session with her in that <clears throat> warm-up place. And she was like, proper asking me, like, yo, I got optional deads. Should I do it? Like, it's only 190. And I was like, yo, like, you can think of it as if you don't do it, that could have been the t- the key point that would add to you know a win, and I was mm. I was saying that because you know go 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 remain optimistic, and you know if you're not that could be like ah uh, if you, like if you didn't do it that could that could be something that could have added on to your deadlift on the day as well. But she still did it, and fuck me, she won, man. Like, I was so happy. <laughs> so you you so... went to Mart- you you went to Mart and became a counselor of counseling people. <laughs> yeah yeah basically, bro. Like I couldn't be at the black with you guys, so I thought be at the back back you know with the other guys <laughs> yeah me so yeah man um and then third third for me is the the cali uh johansson win in the 74s yeah. Oh, yeah. because impressive. Fuck, fuck man like this guy just literally went from like i think he's he's a fucking he's, junior still as well yeah man. junior he's junior world champ to open world champ open world yeah champ. nine for nine calls <laughs> that- for crisp and that 328 move quick. Quick, bro. Mm-hmm. Open it quick. It, no, you're saying nine for nine. Swedish. The Swedish coach or well, handling team is the best in the world. No, I uh, think was calling the shot still, man. Uh, Joey Flex. Joey Flex, yeah. He had the walk. Yeah, yeah my man. Every single time was behind the stage. I saw even saw him making calls for Sunita C. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, cred- all credits to him as well because, you know, he's he's got a good... Uh, He'll some lifters, there. man. He, yeah, yeah, he's got a good definitely. system. So, yeah, so that's my three. Espen, last but not least, any top threes? My, yeah, my you? top three would be Temi. Temi, only because, like, it was finally, like, it was so good to see her to compete fresh. Like, no injuries. Mm, mm. She's been doing every competition for the past few years with an injury. So, it's been annoying to see that. But now she came into this comp nice and fresh. And she fucking killed it, man. She done really good. To be fair, I was talking to her as well, and she did say that she wanted to load up more on squats as well. Mm. So she was a little bit annoyed on that. She definitely had a lot more on squats. But it's something, I guess it's a positive now to take for the next comp because she knows she's got more kilos in that total. So I think that's a positive to take for the next one. Yeah. Um, number two would be, we Joey, you already mentioned it, Carl, because that was a fucking sick performance. It was fun watching that. And believe it or not, I mean, no, I got four, sorry. The third one, we haven't even spoken about this guy, Enna, man. Like, this guy. Oh, fuck, he put the fear of man. Honestly, like, 70. He we put, haven't yeah. spoken about Enna. No, like, even his free. Oh, well, well, I spoke about Enna. Oh, yeah, you did, but. But the way he put the fear of God into the lady at the back. Put put deadlifts to a side, man. He's made some serious progress on his squats. His frame looks. And his bench. Yeah, and his everything. He benches more than me now. Damn. I was, no, everyone kept on telling him, man, you look more jacked. He was like, he oh, looked I thought big, I was skinny man. before. I didn't know I was skinny. Like, yeah, no, so he, mass. he's improved a lot, man. So, yeah. yeah it was, I'm it looking was forward to what he brings at Euros, actually. Yeah, me too. Mm. Yeah, it's just going to keep on getting better and better. Just needs that bench to come up. He just, he just need to... I mean, I even spoke to him, yes, uh, uh, even after the comp. I said, 
he knew to work on his squat so he doesn't need to pull big all the time on that third. Mm. Because as long as I'm still going to be around and as long as the Americans are still going to be around, Anna will still be forced to pull big. Mm. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So that big pull, that third big pull, that's why he's letting him down. Just imagine if he can get that third pull. Yeah. We all can't talk. Yeah. And then, Do you know what I mean? I'm, so, I believe- but believe it or not, my third highlight is going to be, you guys are going to laugh here, but I've got a reason behind this, is Durin's having the shittiest meet of his life. And the reason I wow. say that... No, no, wow. Hit me out. Wow. Hit me out. Hit me out. Nah, what in the warm-up room is going on here? Oi, <laughs> <laughs> Neymar, is that you? Neymar. <laughs> the reason I say this, right, is because it actually shows us that Durin's is fucking human, number one, right? It shows us that anyone, it doesn't matter how great of training you have yet, anything can happen on the day. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be very exciting to see what Durin's does in his next meet. Wait, because... didn't, you, didn't you think the same after fucking motion? No. <laughs> <laughs> yo, that nine, yo, that was no 900, you know? I'm joking, I'm that joking. Was, that was 900, you don't, know? Don't buy it, don't chomp down with them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 900 so, on a, what was it? A five for nine there, six for nine Durin's, there. Jeez. Durin's hasn't had a competition like this, right? That it was really, really fucking bad, right? What are you on Durin's... about? Did you not tell me? Fucking hell, did you my love? You want me to bring up 2018 again? No, in in, in a while, in a long while, I mean. Oh, okay. okay. So, I've wait, got to say, be... what, what are you talking about 2018? But what happened in 2018? Was it 2018? What? 2016, 2016, 2016. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's the one where he bombed out, isn't it? Yeah, bro. No, but it's going to be interesting to see what Joey does now. That, that's what it is. Like, we're excited to see how, how you come back from this. Like, yeah. what this is going to do for you mentally. And how you're gonna come back and just fucking kill it in the next comp? It's yeah. gonna be very exciting yeah. for everyone to see it. And now you're a talking point now, Durins. Now people are gonna be like, right, this has happened to Durins. How the fuck is he gonna come back from this? And it's gonna mm. be very exciting come Saturday to see what you do. Obviously, yeah, I'm not well, saying Saturday, that it's, it's no, in pressure wise. Saturday, Saturday, my probably might be competing as a one or five. You think I'm gonna be an eighty three? <laughs> I'll be like a one or five or something. Yeah. This, guy, this guy's gonna be Hello. eating all the, the escargots and baguettes before. With the way you, with the way you eat, bro, ten point five maybe. Man goes wild. <laughs> yeah, you're never even breaking the ninety kg barrier eating like fucking half a pub fridge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It will yeah, be interesting. Be you know, It'll you need to start your own competition yeah. called Silent Eater. <laughs> 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 Call it a day. <laughs> oh my oh, god. Uh, yeah, you know, just, you know just a before... quick shout out though. I think yeah. a lot of the ladies on the GB team also killed it. I mean, you had um Tasman's Campbell's with that amazing 222.5 mm. deadlift. I mean, oh, that, yeah. was, that was so, Sophia, insane. Sophia got gold in the 76. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? In the 76, no, where we had, around. You know, yeah, we had people like Jess, Carlina, and, yeah, and uh, nuts, of course, Kimberly and Dana McNeil, and Sophia outpulled every single one of them. That was so sick. That was, that was nuts. nuts. Yeah, yeah, that was nuts. That was crazy. You know, so yeah, yeah. The, the, the ladies, they did amazingly. I mean, again, our girl, I did joke here. First international, the girl went nine for nine. Mm-hmm. Nine for nine. Literally, she was the first. Oh, and she, she got drug tested at Wells, bro. I know. Oh, did she? Yeah, man. Congratulations. Oh, yeah, I think she's what? the only one that got drug tested. I think, she, I think she is as well. One honor. Did, yeah. did you get drug tested, Jones? No, but with that meat, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he did a, nah, he found out he found out in advance he was gonna get drug tested and threw it. <laughs> yeah. be, Indy, did you get drug tested? Bro, no. Oh come bro, on. World record the pool, no drug test. Pool record That's a bit pool. sus still, bro. Yeah. Well, you what you want me to like, would you want would you want me to do? I oh, took no, a, I took you know what happened? I took a seventh puff. I was like, oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, before before anything else, I just want to shout out to everyone at Malta that came up to me, that came up to Durance, and I don't, I don't know if they came up to Indy and Mo about the Sabado podcast, but love, love, love to all of them for listening, tuning in, giving us like, you know, a, a few words of love pretty much according to me anyway, like, I didn't know we had the reach like that until, you know, they started coming up to us and recognising us our face like, hey, aren't you that Joey from, I mean, I guess... If I'm gonna get known in the piloting world, like it was not too bad that it's from our podcast, lads. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you know. But uh, yeah, no. Until your next meet, the... though, Joey. Until until Saturday. Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Six twenty. Come in. Five, 
five hundred nine. Whoa, whoa, easy. Let's let's start with six hundred first, and then five nine nine. No, don't do that to <laughs> me, bro. Five. Oh, whoa, 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 mo, mo, mo! Don't start now, bro. Because no, you're, did you're... you did you, you you went six for nine, isn't it? I said five. Oh, for went nine. five for nine, bro. You know what? Oh, <laughs> you, know, you and me, bro. You and me. I didn't know that, bro. To, to be honest, Actually, yeah. no, 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 no. Don't go for. I've been pretty I know I went I went for, for you nine. fuckers. Yeah, Indy, you've been nice. Nine I've been nice to, for nine, bro, I've honestly. been nice to both of you fuckers. Yeah, both of you. I've been nice to you both cuz I could have been a prick. What's all right? Ne- next episode, isn't it? Next Remember week. that. Remember that if I ever have a bad performance, right? <laughs> Bob, Bob, I would definitely remember that, but let's let not talk about bench, but what happened to your bench? But anyway, yeah. You've Ooh. been really good, bro. Let's keep it that way. Hello, don't talk about my best. Let's talk about you cramping on your second squat. We're going here. We're going here. Oh, nice. We're going here. We'll, we'll we do this next week. No, we'll we do this next week. Hey, are we still on, recording? Man. Fresh. No, we are still recording, yeah. I was going to ruin... Yeah, no, I was going to ruin... I don't even remember what happened. So, Indy, what's your next? Your next big me? Euros. Euros. Okay. If I'm, you make I'm, the I've team. Got, I've, got, I've got an army meet. But it's deadlift only. Like I'm just helping out with the army, so I'm gonna go do do a pull at some point in the year. I can't remember what day it is. I think it's September or something. So I'll probably do oh, a big, yeah. probably do a pull there, but probably won't be going um, balls to the wall. Um, open a... on I don't know. Jorans is max, uh, and then here <laughs> Jorans is subtotal. <laughs> and, uh, Who else? Oh, do you know what? You should pull three nine one, bro. There's a comp on Saturday, by the way. Um, five hundred pounds a deadlift comp. I saw that CJ put it that. on. I just said to him, I said, Yo, bro, you might as well give me the money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what you just what, all you need to pull is like what 350? If you guys um, want to do it, wait, yeah, if you want to win a quick 500 pound, why not? True, true. Where is this? Bro, it's isn't in... that if even isn't that if I pull 332 and a half in IPF point, it's more than in the 386. Ah, uh, so will it be on heaviest weight or jail points for deadlift? How are they going to work out? It's just heaviest yeah. deadlift. Oh, I don't, at this, no, no, no. At this 500 pound meet. They I'll base it on jail points. They base it on your weight now. and jail points. Oh, jail yeah, points. That would make more yeah. sense, isn't it? Yeah. The thing is, you can only, only do three lift on IPF points. Um, but All oh, right. Uh, no, no, no. No, no, you can just pull zero. CJ told me you've got unlimited pulls in this comp. Unlimited what? pools in this car. Yeah. What do you mean unlimited pools? I'm, I'm pretty well just sure pull one, go home, me. come back clear, and then pull another deadlift then. Wait, let me have a look. Yeah. Wait, he sent me the picture. It's full meat or bench only to figure out IPF points and dots and stuff. But we we can do that if you want. What are you weighing? 83. What do you want to pull? 332. Mm. Gives you 46.03 IPL, IPF points. So yeah. you need to pull Whatever 380, pull 390, pull 90. So the top you set heaviest like, lift You need to pull like to 400. Be... Indy, you need 400. Yeah, you need 400 to be... Damn. All so, right, I'll just, I'll just I'll just, let Jurens miss fucking five lifts. <laughs> <laughs> Mango's, cool. Mango's if, if I pull 332, I'm like, bro, when you do it, we'll see. Oh, well, actually, no. Oh. Three three two gives you forty five point nine six. Did you hit right. three three two at Worlds? That's why I hit at the British. What did you hit at Worlds? Because we ain't talking about British. We're talking uh, about three twenty five. Okay. 325. Oh, there we go. Then let's just call it a day. Um, and then I put my body, yeah, put my body weight as well. To be fair, Jeez. you know that unlimited attempts that actually makes sense because Mo needs six attempts to get to his opener. <laughs> six attempts to get to my opener. What do you mean six attempts? Like you'll fail, you'll fail the first five attempts, won't you? Because you're cramping. Yeah. Hey, let's calm down, bro. Let's take out this cramping and we can go. Do you know what, you, bro? You've been I, cramping I since wait. March. <laughs> I've been cramping for a long uh, time. We wait, wait. Because I, you, I, I was wait. nice to you both, and then you all decided I, like it's time. I cannot to be. wait for this. I kind of wait for the Euros because Indy, you have to win because Tony Cliff is not going to be there. Mo, uh, Anatoly is not being, is going to be there, so you have to win. So the Euros is going to be interesting. And yo, N is going to be there during, so you have to come second. <laughs> oh, oh shit. shit. No, me and you fire Anna shots at me. Fire me shots and, at me. Me and Enna <laughs> were 2-1. Two, two, so he need to make it 2-2 two, two, or I'm going to make it 3-1. 
<laughs> You're gonna make it three one, isn't it yeah. one three like your squats? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you started, I and we said, are gonna call it there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For on that note, everyone, we'll catch you in the next episode. Thank you, Will. thank you so so much again for listening in. But, and everyone, yeah. go wish Durians and Joey a good luck for their competition on Saturday. More importantly, wish Joey a good luck because this is going to be the comp where he finally fucking hits that big 600 or 595. 599. <laughs> okay. 595, you know. Okay, thank you everyone for listening in. Have a good one, guys.